Christmas. Christmas. Welcome to worship. All of the things that you need to know for worship should be in your bulletin. The children are leading us, and we begin with this good news. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. I bring you good news for great joy for all people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born. He is Christ the Lord. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Please rise as you're able and join the children in lifting our voices and dancing and celebration and praise to our Lord. The story of Christ's birth, God's Son, who we call Jesus, from the Bible in the Gospel of Luke. In those days, a decree went out from the Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirius was the governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth, or Nazareth to Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem. Because he was descended from the house and the family of David, he went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in, the, in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, 
Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child. All who heard it were amazed and what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorify, or glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. I was wondering, are you a little excited about presents? Yeah? Because there's, have you had some presents like under maybe your tree? Yeah. Yeah? So do you think your presents are pretty good? Did you get pretty good presents? Do you think there might be, I bet most of you haven't opened them yet, right? Do you think they're pretty good presents maybe? What do you think is the best Christmas present ever given? I know, smart kids, right? Okay, if you have your hands raised and you think you know the best Christmas present the world was ever given, shout it out loud. Ready? One, two, three. Whoa! Why don't we open it and let's see. Let's see. This is a picture of the best Christmas present ever given. Whoops. Whoops. That's a statue. It is. It's a statue. This isn't the real thing, is it? This is just a pretend one. But baby Jesus. Baby Jesus is the best Christmas present ever given. And we give presents because on Christmas, God gave us the best Christmas present, the best present ever given. God gave us his son, Jesus. But did you know, did you know that the place that Jesus lived isn't in a statue? And it's not in a stable, not anymore. You know where Jesus lived always? In you. In your baptism, when you got baptized, Jesus came to be with you. He said, he said, Alex, you are a beloved child of God and marked with my cross forever. And I will never let you go. I'll be with you always. So, Jesus dwells in your heart. And you know what that makes you? That makes you the next best Christmas present ever given. Really? Each and every child of God is a present from God because Christ is with us and we are sent to the whole world to share God's love. So, take a present. Now, are you always a good present? Yeah. Mm, sometimes we struggle with that, don't we? But remember that because Jesus dwells with you, you're never alone, and you can be a gift to others, right? You can share the love of Jesus with other people. There you go. It's a Christmas present for you. Don't forget that you're a gift. And then remember that when you share God's love with others, they have a story to share too, and God is with them, and they become a present for the world as well. Later on today, we're going to light candles, and we're going to say, let your light shine. Let the light of Jesus shine in you so that everybody can be touched with God's love. And then we're going to watch as the whole church lights up and shines with the love of Jesus, and we're going to watch how love can spread. But in the meantime, I want you to take a ribbon back with you. You keep one for you, and you take one back and give it to somebody else that you love and tell them that they are a present that carries Jesus too. 
Okay? Let's pray. As you go. Hang on. We got you want one more? Yep. Yep. Make sure everybody gets two. Everybody got two now? Okay. Now let's pray. Gracious God, thank you for your amazing love that came to earth in Jesus, your son. Help us to know that even if we feel alone and afraid, you are with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks for coming up. You can head back to your parents. Let us pray. Living God, on this holy night we gather to stand with the shepherds amazed at your glory, to sing with the angels rejoicing in your work, to wait with Joseph trusting in your promise, to sit with Mary cradling your love. May the good news of this night inspire us to tell the world of our great joy. For us is born a Savior the Messiah, the Lord. Glory and praise to you forever. Amen. <clears throat>
Yay, exactly, that's right. <laughs> Grace and peace to you this day from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Have you ever tried to visit the White House in Washington, D.C.? I've been there twice. I know, hold with me. I've been there twice. And visiting the White House is no easy task. If you want to go, the first thing you have to do is contact your senators because you can't just go to the White House, you have to have a reservation. Then when you get your contact with your senator, they'll send you a security file that you have to fill out so that you do an intense background check and make sure that you're not just anybody trying to come and visit the White House. And then when you've completed the background check, you show up at least an hour early for your tour. And when you get there, the security guards or social secret service probably tells you you can't bring anything with you. I missed that memo when I went the first time. You can't even bring a purse, nothing, just your clothes on your body, that's it. Then they tell you to go to the hotel next door to the White House and drop off your stuff because every tourist has got something with them. I don't even remember if you could bring a wallet. Anyways, you drop off all your stuff. And then you go through the security check again, where they check off to make sure that you have everything met, and you walk through the metal detectors and whatever other screening things that they have. It's gotten tighter since September 11th and all the other stuff. You walk through all of that, and you hope that nothing goes off. The first time I went, my I was a fifth grader, and my dad wore his farmer buckle. You know, the farmer belt buckle? It said Ingebrigtsen Farms, he wore it every single day. Nobody ever thought about the fact that you shouldn't maybe wear a belt buckle through a metal detector back then. Anyways, the metal detector went off and the security guards, the Soviet Secret Service came marching with authority and brought my dad over to the side of the, over to the, side of the group and I thought for sure we were going to leave dad in Washington DC because they looked like they meant business. I was scared as a fifth grader. It was his belt buckle. He left his belt buckle behind, and off we went into the White House to see the president's home. When you finally get in, you get to see four rooms-ish, roughly four-ish rooms, where nothing of any importance takes place except for major state dinners and such, but the president doesn't actually live in any of those rooms. Because the answer is, if you want to go see the president, Going to visit the White House isn't going to accomplish that job. Your basic average human being just isn't welcome there. Do you know where you are welcomed? Do you know where virtually everybody is welcomed? My barn. Everybody could be welcome on the barn and my farm. Now granted, the barn and my farm was nothing special. It was a falling down barn. It hadn't been used for years. But it housed my very precious stuff. My baby kitties always hung out in the barn. And I spent many an hour playing in the barn. And if you wanted to come visit, you could just show up without an invitation. And nobody would probably know because the barn's not locked. And if you came, and you asked, we'd never ask you for a security check. Because it's a barn. Imagine, where does God send his son? Did you hear the good news tonight? Did you hear the news of the angel? The angel shows up. And the angel talks to shepherds. Shepherds. Shepherds are not exactly the people that were welcome in the world. Shepherds, shepherds traveled around. They had no real home to call for them, themselves. They kept watch over the sheep and they traveled from one field to the next. And people didn't always like shepherds because, well, trespassing, right? That was part of it. And well, maybe they didn't take baths real often. All kinds of reasons people weren't overly fond of shepherds. When the governor 
decided that a census had to be called and people had to go and be counted and a pregnant woman had to leave Nazareth behind and travel by foot all these miles, let alone be pregnant with the Son of God. When, this, when it was decided that this had to happen, do you know how many people cared about the shepherds? None. Nobody cared that the shepherds got counted. The shepherds were doing what shepherds always do. They were doing their thing in the place where they always did their thing. In a field, nobody made the shepherds go anywhere. Because the shepherds didn't even have a hometown to worry about. And nobody was overly worried about the shepherds being taxed. And yet, when God sends his son to the world, when God sends his son to redeem us all, the news is given to the shepherds because the news is for all people. Every single last one of us. And when the angels speak the news, when they tell the good news about God's son's birth, what they say is, this is the sign this holy child, this one who is sent to save everyone from our sins, this one who loves this broken world, this child, here's the sign that you should look for. You will find the child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. The words are not. You will find the child wrapped in beautiful satin or velvet. Wouldn't velvet be nice for a blanket? Nice and soft. It's not that. You won't find the child wrapped in velvet. And it's not. You'll find the child lying in a beautiful gold cradle in the middle of the temple or in the middle of a palace. It's not that. That's not the sign. Because if it were, the shepherds wouldn't have bothered to go look. The shepherds would know that as soon as they hit the palace door, the security guards would bounce them. And the shepherds would know that if they tried to get into the temple, they wouldn't know the rules. And the level of uncomfortable would be huge. The shepherds would know where they have a place. So the sign is, You'll find the child wrapped in swaddling clothes, wrapped in whatever Mary had available at the moment, and lying in a manger. Because you see, all of creation is welcome here. And God sent his son to welcome us all. Think about who gets welcomed at the manger. The shepherds are welcome. They're not a bit afraid to go. The children, they're there playing with baby kitties or checking out whatever else happens to be there critter-wise, right? Children are drawn to a manger. The business people, they're welcome. Maybe they shelter their animals there. Who's welcome at the manger? Everyone is welcome because God wants all of us to know that we need to do nothing. We can simply come as we are. And this child is here for us to hold. And this child will hold us. What do you come carrying to the manger tonight? There's nothing that does not make you welcome here. This child has been born for you today. This child is God's son, and this child loves you so completely that not even sin can stand in the way of his love. Think of all of the other places as Jesus grows up that he will make people welcome. You will find him hanging out with people that don't find welcome in the temple. Jesus loves all of us. 
you will find him dying on a cross as a criminal. Not because he is a criminal, but because all are wrapped in his love. So come. Come tonight. Bring all of you. All the good, all the bad, all the ugly, all the broken. And know that this child will hold all of it. Because that's how much God loves you. Gather here at the manger with all of God's people. Because at the manger with our Lord, all are welcome. Maybe the only catch to the story is, are we comfortable with hanging out with all who are welcomed by the Lord? That's maybe the catch, isn't it? Everyone is welcome in the arms of Jesus. And everyone is gathered to be family. So are you willing to hang out with shepherds? Are you willing to hang out with dot, dot, dot? Are they willing to hang out with you? Because Christ has come for all the world to save all of us from our sin. Amen. Thanks be to God.
On this holy night, we celebrate Christ, the babe in the manger, God's only son, who has come to dwell with us, and we pray. Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest. Lord, the world often feels too crowded to have room for your unconditional love. Yet, Lord, this is what we need most. Slip into our world in surprising ways and bring your healing. Come, come, Lord Jesus, be our guest. We pray for problems that seem too big for a baby to handle, a world where war destroys lives, where children are hungry, where death and grief is real and hard to heal. Lord, help us to trust that children grow. May what seems to be small gifts of love and grace be bigger and mean more than what first meets the eye. Give us faith to see and hearts that are open to the possibility in the midst of the impossible. Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest. Lord, the shepherds are returning, praising God and sharing all that they have seen and heard with the community around them. Lord, we pray for those who are near to our hearts and for ourselves. Be with those who are sick, those who are grieving, those who are struggling in any way. Dwell with us in the brokenness, sin, and pain, and lead us to life everlasting. Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest. May all of the world be filled and blessed. Amen.
rise as you're able and let us pray. Lord, giver of life, you give us your son and claim us as your children. As we give thanks for the birth of your son, Jesus, we offer these gifts of ourselves, time, abilities, and treasures. Receive these gifts of love and use them to fill the world with the love of Christ. Amen. Christ is present with us. He comes as a child, a babe in a manger, and he gives himself to each of us in this meal, the body and blood of our Lord. All are welcome at this table, and all are fed by these simple gifts. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it for all the drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray.
table and receive this blessing. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you forever in his grace and love. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God in Jesus, God came to dwell with us and heaven touches earth. May we who have tasted heavenly things share the gift of your presence with all the world through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. The Christmas Gospel, according to the Gospel of John. In the beginning was the Word, 
And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things came into being through him. Without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave the power to become children of God, who are born not of blood, or of the will of flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh, and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory of the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. so they may see your good works and give glory to your heavenly Father. We pass the light tonight. Remember as the light is received to always dip the unlit candle into the lit one. Then we will sing have a Silent Night when everybody's candle is lit. And at the last verse of Silent Night, head out to the, or as Silent Night is sung, head out to the narthex. We'll end with Go to Alba on the Mountain there. 